Adana was furious. She had set her sights on Ned marrying into Mazin Dubisi's family and couldn't fathom why her plans had gone awry. She tried to dissuade Machi and her son, extolling Ned's goodness and speaking ill of Sochima. But Mazin Dubisi and his family wondered why a mother would speak so bad of her own daughter, as they thought if Nena was truly Sochima's mother. Once upon a time in Nzam village, there lived a woman named Adanna. Adanna lived with her two daughters, Sochima and Nedi. Adanna's love for her daughters was unequal. She adored Nedi, her older daughter, and despised Sochima, her younger daughter. Every morning, Sochima would wake up, sweep the floors, fetch water from the river, and prepare breakfast. On the contrary, Ned slept and awoke to freshly prepared food. Adana made sure that Ned never lifted a finger at home. She believed that Ned, her precious daughter, despite being older than Sochima, was too delicate for chores. Nenna made Sochima work as a maid in her father's house. But Sochima happily attended to all the chores and never complained. One day, Mazin Dubisi and Machi, a retired couple, relocated to the village from the city and moved into their house near Nena's house. The couple had three children, two sons and a daughter, who had made successful lives for themselves in the city. When Nena heard about the couple's sons, she envisioned Nedi marrying into Ndubisi's family and securing a comfortable future for herself and living in glory of her daughter's good wealth. Adana wasted no time in getting into the couple's lives. She made her daughter Ned dress in her best clothes and sent her to Mazin Dubisi's house, ostensibly to help them settle in and assist with chores and make a good impression. She told Ned that Mazin Dubisi has wealthy sons who can change their lives. Ned, who had never lifted a finger in her house, found the work at Mazin Dubisi's house challenging but stuck to tax because of their wealthy sons whom she was yet to meet. While Sochima continued to take care of all the household burdens at home, hoping to be loved by her mother one day, as she attended to the chores in their house, she wondered how Nedi was faring with the work at Mazin Dubisi's house. The elderly couple, though grateful for Nedi's help, noticed her worry and lack of skill in household chores. They appreciated her effort but found her somewhat cold and disinterested in meaningful chats. Mazin Dubisi and his wife Machi had had talks in the village about Nedi's younger sister Sochima. Her efforts and kindness and wondered about her. One day, Machi visited Adana's home to thank her for the help her family had rendered to them since they returned to the village. While she was there, she met Sochima in the kitchen preparing their night food. Sochima greeted her with her warm and calm voice. Machi responded to her greeting, all smiles, and told Nenna to let Sochima come to their house the next day with Nedi. Nenna's face was clouded with irritation on hearing Machi ask for Sochima to visit them, but could not say no. The next day, Nenna begrudgingly allowed Sochima to go to Mazin Dubisi's house in the company of her sister Nedi. Machi and her husband gave Sochima a warm welcome. And as they spent the evening chatting and laughing out loud, Sochima felt the genuine kindness of the couple and wished she could feel same in her home. The relationship between both families continued and the girls both visited them together. One sunny afternoon, as Nedi and Sochima were returning from Mazin Dubisi's house, they met a man by the side of the road. He seemed to be in pain and his clothes were dirty. He called out to the sisters and asked if they could help him. He told them that he was coming back from the city and had been robbed by some men. He further told them that he had strained his ankle from the robbery attack and seek help as he walked closer to the sisters with a slight limp in his step. Ned insulted and called the man names for looking quite dirty. 
She called him a weakling for not facing the robbers as a man. Ever compassionate Sochima immediately rushed to his side and offered to help as she examined his ankle and offered her arm for support. She told him there is a clinic nearby where he could get help. As they worked slowly towards the clinic, the man introduced himself as a maker. He explained that he was visiting the village to see his parents and had been attacked on his way. Sochima listened calmly as he spoke. A calm personality put Emeka at ease until they got to the clinic. Unknown to Sochima, while she was with Emeka at the clinic, her sister Ned had gone home and told their mother that she was gallivanting the streets of the village with a dirty-looking stranger. Later that day, when Sochima got home, Nenna flogged her mercilessly for staying out late with a man and leaving her to cook their night food. She made sure Sochima slept that night on an empty stomach. After a few days, while Sochima was walking home with a bag seat of tomatoes, she had plucked from the farm to sell at the market the next day. She met a maker who thanked her for the help she had rendered to him. And they talked as he worked her home. Sochima got home that evening and continued with the house chores. And when Emeka got home, he met Ned sitting in front of their house with his parents peeling cassava. Unknowing to both sisters, Emeka was the wealthy son of Mazin Dubisi who lives in the city. Machi quickly introduced their son, Emeka, to Ned, who was surprised at the turn of events. She quickly became uncomfortable and decided to go home. When she got home, she told her mother and sister what had happened. Sochima too was as surprised as she was but wasn't uncomfortable as she hadn't done any wrong to Emeka. The next day, Machi sent for both sisters. When they arrived, she told them about her son who hadn't told his parents about his encounter with Nedi. Weeks passed and Emeka, who had taken time to know the sisters, admired her. How Sochima handled herself with respect and compassion towards others. He made his intentions known as he expressed his desire to marry Sochima, whom he had fallen in love with her personality. Adana was furious. She had set her sights on Ned marrying into Mazin Dubisi's family and couldn't fathom why her plans had gone awry. She tried to dissuade Machi and her son extolling Nedi's goodness and speaking ill of Sochima. But Mazin Dubisi and his family wondered why a mother would speak so bad of her own daughter, as they thought if Nenna was truly Sochima's mother. Yes, Sochima was Nenna's biological daughter, but her taking after Nenna's mother-in-law's looks, which was why Nenna hated her so much. Because her mother-in-law had treated her with so much disdain and had died a day before the birth of her daughter, Sochima, whom she considered to be her mother-in-law's reincarnate. So each time she set her eyes on Sochima, it brought back the hurtful memories of her mother-in-law's ill treatments towards her. Mazin Dubisi and his wife, Machi, heard about Nenna and her mother-in-law's story and told Nenna that that was not enough reason to have hated an innocent child. They made her see reasons as to why her decision to hate her daughter was wrong. Nenna came to terms that she had made the wrong decisions and apologized to her daughter Sochima and then promised to treat her the way she deserved. And with her support, Sochima and Emeka got married. Sochima's head work and pure heart had won her the life she deserved. Nedi, who was initially disappointed, came to understand that her sister's happiness didn't diminish her own worth. Nine months after their marriage, Sochima bore her husband a son and Nenna traveled to the city for the first time in her life to babysit her grandchild. There, she was given rich mommy's treatment. She got all she had ever wished for and more. Nedi, on the other hand, got admission into a university outside the country to further her studies. Sochima's marriage brought prosperity and joy to herself and her family. She remained humble and shared her good fortune with her family. Hello, favorite one. Thanks for listening to my stories. Your support means the world to me and I couldn't do this without you. Your likes, comments and shares keep me motivated to create more stories.
If you're new here, welcome to the channel. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe and turn on the post notification bell so you never miss out on any of my new stories. Thanks again and see you in the next story.